I've been using the Surface Pro for quite some time. In fact, most of my finished artwork over the last two years or so has been done on the Surface Pro. So now that I've had the opportunity to use the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, how do these two products stack up against each other? These are both Windows-based tablets. That means you can run any desktop app that your heart desires, and you can run them well. They both have styluses that let you draw on the screens, and they're both portable. After using them both, one thing that really kind of hit home was the different goals the product teams had when they were designing these products. The Surface Pro was a tablet that was designed to replace your laptop and it was also designed for everybody. Now Microsoft has definitely been listening to creatives quite a bit when developing their products. But these are also made for accountants, happy business note-taking people, angry football players, and even parents. Built for everybody. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, however, is designed, like most of Wacom's products, specifically for creatives, artists, 3D digital people. And even though it is portable, it lives up to the name Studio. It feels more like a laptop than it does a mobile tablet type device. But as I look at both of these, the one thing that really stands out is how they thought about their audiences and how serving those different audiences really shaped the development of these two different products. The Surface Pro comes with a 12-inch screen. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro comes in two different sizes, the 13 and the 16. The 13 is a little under 13 inches as far as how the screen is sized, and the 16 is a little under 16 inches in terms of the size of the screen. Now, the Mobile Studio Pro also has bevels along the side and also has the hotkeys along the side, so it's going to be a little bit bigger than what you would expect maybe a 16-inch screen to be. So to start our comparison, let's jump into the pen. The Surface Pro comes with this guy. This is based on Entrig technology and it is a battery powered pen. The Mobile Studio Pro uses Wacom's Pro Pen 2 stylus and it boasts some really new impressive features and for the most part these specs stand up. If you want to see me go into depth about those kind of specs and things like that you should check out my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro review that I posted last week. The pen on the Wacom does not have batteries and I bring this up because this is some subtle changes between how these two pens operate. Battery powered pens tend to have have less or even no parallax, the space between your stylus where the cursor appears and the tip of your pen is. The Wacom pens and some of the Wacom knockoff pens have a problem where sometimes there is a lot of displacement between the tip of your pen and where that stylus actually appears, but I found that on the Mobile Studio Pro, it's pretty much spot on. As long as your pen is calibrated well, you should be in good shape. The Surface Pro 4 pen has 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity, whereas the Wacom pen has a whopping 8,000 levels. Actually, 8,194 if you want to get really specific. From a number standpoint, the Wacom beats the snot out of its competition, but like I said in my full review last week, I really can't tell the difference. They're both calibrated well to take advantage of the pressure levels that you have. And in general, I think we've hit a point where pretty much everything out there has enough pressure to do the job. What I want to know when I'm looking at pressure on a pen is can I get a smooth transition from thick to thin lines? Can I hold a consistent line weight going around curves and in large objects? And if I'm drawing quick hatch lines, can I make them more or less uniform? And I could say with confidence that both of these devices do that well. So so which is better? And this is the part of the video where commenters are going to get mad. I've been using the Surface Pro Pen for so long that it feels totally natural to me. So I remember when I first got it, there was a bit of a learning curve to it, but I've been very happy with the pen itself. When I got the Mobile Studio Pro, I took to the pen right away. It felt good right out of the gate. There was no learning curve whatsoever. However, I have been using Wacom's tech dating back to like 2007, so I might just be familiar with that the same way I'm familiar with the Surface Pro Pen. So we'll put it this way. Both are good and both are going to help you make great art. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the pen wobble thing on the Surface Pro's pen. If you draw slowly, you are going to see more wobble on the Surface Pro Pen than you are going to see on the Wacom Pen. Something I did not catch in my review, but a commenter brought up is that he was getting way lines when he was drawing with a ruler on the Mobile Studio Pro. I totally didn't catch that until uh, he mentioned that on my review and sure enough I, I was finding those as well. No pen tech is perfect and as you get to drawing angled lines you're gonna find this sort of thing. Another difference is the feeling of drawing on the screen. The Wacom Mobile Studio Pro has a slight matte finish to it and so your pen kind of has a little bit of resistance as you're drawing. The Surface Pro has a very smooth glass screen and on older generations of it the pen would glide around and kind of ice skate on the surface but on the latest version, they've included a little rubber tip on the end of the pen, which gives it just enough resistance and gives you a lot more control over your drawing. It doesn't feel as natural, but it does give you that control. 
So overall, I am going to be giving the edge of the drawing experience to Wacom on this one. Between the slightly more accurate pen and the fact that the screen feels a little bit more natural to draw on, I think it just has the edge here. Wait, for all you people running to make angry comments, I just want to let you know it's not that the surface is bad, it just got edged out here. Speaking of edges, there are bevels. A lot of modern tablets are killing the bevels. Heck, even Samsung phones have these like wraparound edges of their screens. I think these bevels give you a little bit of extra space for your hand to kind of glide before hitting the edge of the tablet. I don't know if Wacom did this on purpose, but it's nice to have that like little extra half an inch for your hand to slide before kind of falling off the edge. Sometimes your hand can get caught if you're making a big stroke or something like that. So having the extra bevels when you're drawing isn't necessarily a bad thing. The other thing I should mention about the Mobile Studio Pro is the express keys and shortcut ring along the side. On the Surface Pro, I'm always flipping open the keyboard. I do have some on-screen keys and yes, they work, but it's just not quite the same. I find that most programs I am using, I'm still really dependent on the keyboard. And on the Mobile Studio Pro, I can literally go hours without using the keyboard because of the express keys. The one thing on the Surface Pro that I've never really been able to master, even with little shortcut keys, is an efficient way to change my brush size quickly. I just haven't found an elegant solution, but the ring on the Wacom is that elegant solution. I bet somebody mentions the puck. You're totally gonna mention the puck. It's cool, but Anyway, I'm gonna save my thoughts on that for a different video. When you add up all these things, I think that the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro is just a better drawing experience. It's not like a thousand times better, but, but it is better. But that's just drawing experience. When we look at the tablet as a whole, I, I think things change a little bit. And something that I really need to talk about is this idea of portability. There is a huge difference between the Surface Pro and the Mobile Studio Pro in terms of size. Now, in this picture, it's a little unfair to compare a 15 some odd inch device with a 12 inch screen. So maybe the Mobile Studio Pro 13 would be a more apt comparison here. The 13 is smaller and lighter. In fact, the 13 only weighs a little over three pounds. But even when you're comparing that with the Surface Pro 4, which is only 1.7 pounds, it's almost twice as much. And I misspoke earlier, the Wacom 13 has a 13.3 inch screen compared to the 12 inch screen. So you're talking about a larger area, especially once you add in the bevels of the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. If you're gonna bring the Mobile Studio Pro with you, you're going to need the tablet. You're probably going to need a stand because it doesn't come with one. You're gonna need a keyboard. You're gonna need a mouse. You're you're gonna need the pen and you're gonna need a power cable. And while yes, that is totally mobile, it's still a pretty full laptop bag. The Surface Pro is built to be super portable where the Mobile Studio Pro is meant to be a full studio that just happens to be mobile. One of the things I absolutely love about the Surface Pro that I hadn't really thought about when I first got it is how portable it is. I could just flip up the type cover, which is always attached to it, unless I yank it off. And I can carry it around like a notebook, which I have. I can take it to my daughter's skating lessons. I can take it to a conference and take notes with it, I can take it to a client meeting, I can pretty much take it anywhere. And oftentimes when I take it with me, I'm not bringing a whole bag of accessories with me, I'm just holding on to it like I would bring a notebook or something. So the Mobile Studio Pro really might be a better art machine, but you're giving up some of that convenience. I think this goes back to what I said at the beginning of the video when I was talking about how these are designed for different audiences. And if you're going to be sitting at a desk most of the time, maybe you occasionally you have to go to a different desk, uh, the Mobile Studio Pro is gonna work just fine. Whereas the audience that Microsoft was aiming at was the super mobile audience, the, the audience who really wants to take this thing with them easily. And those are two very different design goals and I think they show up in the hardware. Now, since the Mobile Studio Pro is designed to be used at a desk, I was a little surprised. Actually, I might even say disappointed that you can't actually get a stand for it right now. You can order one of the older stands for the Companion 2, but I don't know if that even like attaches to the new tablets. The Surface Pros, they have kickstands, really nice kickstands, and it stays where you put it. Even after two years of use, mine stands up really well. Hold on a second as I adjust this camera because we need to talk about money. It is no secret that Wacom's products are pretty expensive. And quite honestly, the Surface Pro compared to many other budget laptops is also kind of expensive. If you're going to be getting one of these, I would recommend a Surface Pro with at least eight gigs of RAM. And I would suggest the same exact thing if you're looking at the Mobile Studio Pro. Yeah, I know it costs more now, but a year or two down the road, I think that investment, you're gonna thank yourself in the long run.
If you're looking at the Surface Pro 4, I would definitely recommend the keyboard. You don't need it, but you're gonna want it if you want the best experience, and you should consider it a must-have if you're purchasing the Surface Pro, and that is gonna cost you an extra $130. So right now, the lowest-end Surface Pro that I would recommend costs about $1,000. It's a little bit cheaper right now because it's a year-old hardware, so Microsoft has rolled back the prices a little bit. With the keyboard, you're gonna spend about $1,130. The Mobile Studio Pro, with very similar specs, is going to cost you about $1,800. It's probably not a bad idea to factor in some extra money as well because you're going to want to get some kind of stand. Maybe you're going to want some kind of keyboard and mouse as well even though you can use any Bluetooth keyboard and mouse that you have lying around like I did. So yeah we are looking at a huge jump in prices between these two devices even though they're using pretty much the same specs. They're using the same Intel sixth generation chips. One nice thing about the Wacom is it does have a micro SD slot so you can expand your storage on the cheap. So what you're getting for that extra $700 is a slightly better drawing experience. I think if you're the type of person who spends eight to 10 hours a day working on a tablet like this, an investment like that could, could be totally worth it. For me, at the end of the day, it comes down to the mobility experience that you're gonna get with the Surface versus the drawing experience you're gonna get with the Wacom. So this is just me, but I think my ideal setup, like if I had all the money in the world, I'd probably go with like a Surface Studio to have that giant screen at home and have a Surface Pro on the side to kind of take with me where I need to go. I really like having a portable tablet that I can take anywhere easily. Easily is the key word here. But what about the iPad Pro? How does this compare to the iPad Pro? Why haven't you mentioned the iPad Pro, Brad? What's wrong with you? Huh? 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 I always feel a little bit weird comparing the iPad Pro to a full-blown Windows computer because they're just completely different animals. It's like comparing a zebra to an ostrich. You can look at their speed and their environment and their weight, but they're really different animals. One of them can't even fly and the other one can't fly either. This is why I don't write metaphors. My point here is the iPad versus the Surface slash Wacom are just, just very different here because of the software. The iPad's like a companion device for me. It's really nice to have. You get a lot of that mobility, that portability that you want, but it can't replace everything like the Surface or the Wacom can. If I have just an iPad, I'm still going to want a laptop to export my artwork to. Where's the Mobile Studio Pro? is your new laptop. If you want my full thoughts on that particular topic, I think my iPad versus Surface video I did a couple months back still holds up pretty well. And most of the conclusions I reach in that I think apply to the Wacom Mobile Studio just as much as they apply to the Surface. Yeah, so that is the video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comments. As always, you can hit me up on Twitter. And if you would like to support my videos, uh, you can do that by supporting me on Patreon. That's all I got for this week. I'm going to see you guys in in a couple of days and have a great one.